Hi everybody, formula, key equations, key conditions for everything in the micro course. Use this to blitz through your macro exams, to access micro multiple choice questions. Your life will be so much easier. So make sure you take all this information in. Let's get going with theory of the firm. Total equations, not just total cost, but total fixed cost and total variable cost. The easy way to get total cost is just total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Rearrange that to get TFC. So TC minus total variable cost. Total variable cost is just total cost minus total fixed cost. But the other way to get it is take the averages and multiply by Q. So total cost, just average cost multiplied by Q. Total fixed cost, average fixed cost multiplied by Q. TVC, AVC multiplied by Q. What about the average equations, not just AC, but AFC, AVC? Well, the easy way to get it, take your total, so TC, divide by Q or TFC, divide by Q or here TVC, divide by Q. The other way to get it, average cost, is average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Rearrange that for AFC, average cost minus AVC and average variable cost, average cost minus average fixed cost. So which equation do you use? Depends on the data you're given. Let that drive the equation that you use. And now to marginal cost. Well, a nifty trick with any marginal equation, it's just the average equation with changes in it. So marginal cost is simply the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Your average equation with changes in it will always give you marginal. Move to revenue, total revenue is P times Q. Average revenue, yes is total revenue divided by Q, but if you expand that out, TR is P times Q, cancel out the like terms, you're left with P. So a nice trick, average revenue is just price, simple as that. Marginal revenue, just the average equation with changes in it. So now the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity, marginal revenue. The product equations, be careful with these while working with the quantity of labor. So total product, is average product multiplied by the quantity of labor. Average product is total product divided by the quantity of labor. Marginal product, the same equation as average with changes in it. So now the change in total product divided by the change in the quantity of labor. Returns to scale uh, to derive the shape of the long run average cost curve. We are comparing the percentage change of output to the percentage change of input. So if the percentage change of output is greater than the percentage change of input, you get increasing returns to scale. The LRAC curve will slope downwards. When the two are equal, constant returns to scale, the curve will be uh, not sloping down or up, it will be flat. If the percentage change of output is less than the percentage change in input, that is decreasing returns to scale. Go to profit now. Profit is total revenue minus total cost, but also it's average revenue minus average cost. That will give you profit per unit because we're working with averages. Very useful when we consider the next conditions coming. Supernormal profit or abnormal profit is when TR is greater than TC or when AR is greater than AC. That will be supernormal profit per unit. Multiply that by quantity, you get the total supernormal profit that way. Subnormal profit or a loss more simply is when total revenue is less than total cost or an average revenue is less than average cost. Again, that will be a loss per unit multiplied by Q to get the total loss. Normal profit, which is break even in economics, is when TR equals TC or when AR equals AC. But know that normal profit break even is also sales maximization. It's also the limit price. Profit max occurs when MR is equal to MC. Revenue max is when MR is zero. Sales max, we just said, is when AR is equal to AC. It occurs at break even. Profit satisficing occurs at any quantity between profit maximization and sales maximization. Great, let's continue. Allocative efficiency very simply occurs where demand equals supply. More technically, we can say it's where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. Assuming there are no externalities, we can say it's where marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. But also on a market structures diagram, we can say it occurs where price equals marginal cost. Price is average revenue, which is the demand curve. 
marginal cost is the supply curve. So all three is simply saying the same thing, where demand equals supply, that's allocative efficiency for you. Productive efficiency occurs when a firm is operating at the lowest point on their average cost curve, pure cost minimization there. X efficiency occurs when a firm is operating on the average cost curve at any given quantity. So not quite as extreme as productive, but economists would say a firm is minimizing waste, minimizing cost at any given quantity. For dynamic efficiency to occur, there needs to be long run supernormal profit, which is then reinvested back into the company. The minimum efficient scale, a very important point for a business here, is the minimum output level whereby all economies of scale are fully exploited. So it's the first output level where the LRAC curve stops decreasing. At that point, all economies of scale are fully exploited. The shutdown condition, this occurs, or the shutdown price, when average revenue is equal to average variable cost. If a firm is operating where AR is less than AVC, that firm should shut down. But if AR is greater than AVC, they should continue operating in the short run. Shutdown condition there. A concentration ratio, you will always write it in this form. N, the number of firms, and then their total market share. So for example, if you need to calculate or work out a five firm concentration ratio, N would be five, the market share will be adding up the market shares of the five individual largest companies. And then that would go there, whatever the total market share is. To work out total utility, well, this is just average utility multiplied by quantity. If we go to average utility, that's total utility divided by quantity. If we take marginal utility, same trick as always, the average equation with changes in it. So here the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. Utility is maximized when marginal utility is zero, or if there is a price where marginal utility is equal to that price. Now elasticity equations, just remember you Q before you P. So price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. PS is the percentage change in quantity supplied over the percentage change in price. Cross elasticity of demand, the percentage change in quantity demanded of one good, call it good A, over the percentage change in price of another, call it good B. Income elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. To work out percentage change, it's always the difference between two numbers, divide by the original number times by 100. To work out an index number, to convert a raw number to an index number, you take the raw number that you want to convert and you divide by the raw number in the base here. Multiply that by 100. A profit max employer in a labor market will employ workers up until where MRP is equal to the marginal cost of labor. And lastly, the Gini coefficient, much better to learn this with words as opposed to using letters. It's just the area between the Lorentz curve and line of perfect equality divided by the total area beneath the line of perfect equality. So LOPE, the line of perfect equality, LC, the Lorentz curve. Much better way to learn it that way than just with letters from a Lorentz curve. So that's it guys, all the formulas, the key equations, key conditions for everything in the micro course. Hopefully you've taken that all in and you're gonna ace your micro exams because of it. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch my macro video where I've done exactly the same thing for the macro course and I can't wait to see you in future videos.